Hey, thank you for joining me this week. You know, I've been sharing this month about being broken, mended, and made whole. And you know, it's funny because I like to make people laugh when I go to different churches. I like to see people happy and smiling, but it seems like everywhere I go, the place is in tears. <laughs> but I have to tell you, if there's anything I hate, I hate seeing people walking around insecure, inferior, wounded on the inside, and missing out on God's plan for their lives <clears throat> because of all the junk they've been through, all the pain, all the wounds from the past. So when I see people crying, I know the healing is beginning. Something's happening. So I just felt in my heart I was supposed to share this message this whole month about being broken, being mended, and being made whole. You know, God cannot use you publicly until you have gotten victory privately. Now, the reason I say that is because if you're anything like I used to be, I used to avoid solitude, aloneness, quietness at all costs. I hated being alone. But I want you to know <laughs> that in order for you to begin the healing process, you've got to get comfortable being alone because that is where healing takes place. It's right there in your den, in your kitchen, in your bedroom, just you and God. And you know, when you're alone with God, Receiving God's love, it is the cure. I'm telling you, it is the bottom line cure for every wound in your life. But you've got to get convinced that God is not mad at you. He's not upset with you. He loves you so much. You know, the Bible says His love is unconditional. It says His love never fails. His love covers a multitude of sin. God's love is the cure for the insecure. It is the cure for every wound you've ever been through, ever experienced in your life. And it's hard to actually explain that until you experience it. But that's just it. God wants you to experience it for yourself. And I want you to know, whether you've had an abortion or not, He loved you through it. When you got on a wrong relationship, God still loved you. When you got out of church for a while, He still loved you. When you got mad and you lost your temper, God still loved you. When you stopped talking to Him and felt like everything was His fault, He still loved you. No matter what you've been through in your life, God loves you. He loves you so much. And He wants to pour all of His love on you because He knows that's step number one in you receiving healing. You know, as a mom, I'm a really proud mother of my daughter, Cassidy. And I carry little pictures around of her, you know, and, and everybody's like, oh, y'all look so much alike, got the same hair color. And she, there's our little family, you know, she's got long legs like her dad and she's Got red hair like me. I was about to say she's smart like me. <laughs> she's got the red hair. Well, I am so proud of Cass. I carry all these little pictures around. Well, do you know that the Bible actually says that God has indelibly imprinted or tattooed a picture on the palm of each of his hands, a picture of you? He, it says he has actually tattooed a picture of you on the palm of each of his hands. So parents weren't the first ones to come up with this idea of carrying pictures around of our kids. God loves you so much that if he just starts to miss you, he just looks at your little face on the palm of his hands. Well, it's hard for us to comprehend that, but that's how much God loves you. And you know, the closer you get to God, the bigger he will become in your life where you'll just start to realize God can handle everything. I trust Him. No matter how bad this hurts, no matter how impossible my situation seems, the closer you get to God, the bigger He becomes in your life. You know, when Cassidy was a little bitty and I'd be out pushing her in a jogging stroller, she'd see an airplane up in the sky and, and she'd say, um, Mommy, are there, are there little bitty people in that airplane? Because <laughs> it's so far up there, that plane looks like it's about that big. So she just thought there's tiny little people that get on that plane. Well, you know, the further that airplane is, the smaller it becomes. But if she was to stand right up next to a 747, she would realize just how big and massive that airplane is, and the people were bigger too. Well, it's the same with God. The closer you get to Him by just spending time with Him, whether it's five minutes a day, ten minutes a day, an hour a day, whatever it is, the closer you get to God, the bigger He becomes in your life. You know, the further you get from God by not spending time with Him, not talking to Him, the smaller He becomes. He's a no big deal thing in your life. But God wants to be big. He wants to be so close to you. He wants to talk to you about everything. 
Well, one of the keys, and I learned this from Joyce Meyer, she said, when you begin to worship God for who you need Him to be in your life, that very attribute of God will be manifest in your life. Now, I mean, the way to illustrate that would be if your foot was hurting, you wouldn't go to a heart specialist. You would go to a podiatrist. If your heart wasn't beating right, you don't go to the eye doctor. You go to the cardiologist. Well, if you're brokenhearted and you're wounded inside from a lot of junk that you've been through, you don't need to spend all of your time seeking God as your financial provider. You need to spend some time seeking God as Jehovah Rapha, God the healer. So as you begin to worship God for being the healer in your life, the very attribute of healing will manifest in you. You know, I like this story in Matthew 8, 1 through 3. This is what it says. It talks about a leper who saw Jesus approaching and he was crying out to Jesus. And people were telling him to be quiet, be quiet, but he cried out even louder. And it says that the leper, he, you know, as he saw Jesus approaching, he kneels before him worshiping, saying, Lord, if you want to, you can heal me. Now, the things, the three things that I want you to notice about this leper is Number one, the leper wasn't asking the Lord for a financial miracle. He knew he needed healing. So he began to seek out the Lord as his healer. He actually cried out to the Lord, you know, and everybody told him to be quiet. So step number one is you've got to cry out to God. And the Bible tells us so many times when you cry out, he comes running. Step number two I want you to notice is the leper bowed down and began worshiping God before he got his healing. He bowed down and started worshiping the Lord, which is a clue to us that we don't just worship God when everything's great. If you'll begin bowing down and worshiping the Lord for being your healer, I'm telling you, God responds to that. Especially, you know, there's something about when you actually get on your knees and just it's like you're in total and complete surrender to God. God takes notice of that. And then step number three, I want you to notice that Jesus said, I don't know if I read that part. Jesus touched the man and he said, I want to. In other words, he, then he said, be healed. And instantly the leprosy disappeared. I want you to notice that it is God's will to heal you. Jesus said, I want to. So it is God's will that you be healed and that you be healed instantly. God doesn't want you going another month, another day, another year of your life with all of those wounds on the inside of you. He wants to heal you of this so you can start to pull your shoulders back, go after God's plan for your life without all that heaviness weighing you down. Now, I want you to get this series that I taught. It's a very private and personal message that I shared in the studio on eight steps to receiving emotional healing. These are steps that I've applied in my own life, and I believe it will tremendously help you to, from being broken to mended to being completely and truly made whole. So thank you for joining me, and I hope to see you next week.